Hi, this is Mike again. Today, I want to discuss a brief history of Hamas and why they are such a thorn in the side of Israel. Hamas was founded in the 1980s and has been opposed to the late Yasser Arafat's Palestine Liberation Organization, the PLO, since its inception. There are claims the Israeli government helped finance Hamas in its early days to build up a counterweight to the PLO, though all actors in question deny Israel played any role in establishing the organization. Unlike the PLO, Hamas does not recognize Israel's right to exist. Its emblem depicts the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem, and the outline of the territory of Israel, Gaza, and the West Bank as a single Palestinian state. In 1993, Arafat made peace with Israel in the context of the Oslo Accords, ending the First Intifada, which began in 1987. Hamas rejected the peace process and continued its terror attacks against Israel. In 2006, Hamas won the absolute majority in Gaza's general elections. In 2007, it solidified its hold on the coastal enclave through a violent coup. Since then, the West Bank has been controlled by the moderate Fatah party under Mahmoud al-Bas, while Gaza has remained under Hamas control. Hamas has continued its war against Israel from within the Gaza Strip, claiming it is acting in self-defense. The organization engaged in heavy fighting against Israel's armed forces in 2008, 2009, 2012, and 2014. So what is the situation in the Gaza Strip? The Gaza Strip is one of the most densely populated territories in the world. Its tightly controlled land borders with Israel and Egypt, along with its maritime border, have largely isolated its economy. Large parts of the population in Gaza live in dire poverty and depend on humanitarian support from abroad. Hamas often fires rockets at Israel from within residential areas and operates command posts and apartment blocks. The practice effectively uses civilians as human shields. Hamas has been secretly digging underground tunnels to smuggle arms into the enclave, chiefly for so, who supports Hamas? Qatar's Hamas most important financial backer and foreign ally. Qatari Amir Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani was the first state leader to visit the Hamas government in 2012. So far, the emirate has transferred 1.8 billion to Hamas. Israel, meanwhile, hopes Qatar will join the U.S. brokered Abraham Accords and establish diplomatic relations with it, as a number of Arab states already have done. Hamas is also supported by Turkey. In talks just prior to Hamas launching rocket attacks against Israel, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan expressed political backing for its leader Ismail Haniyeh. Hamas is also supported by a range of non-state initiatives and foundations, some of which are based in Germany. According to the German weekly Der Spiegel, donations to Hamas from Germany-based groups are increasing. How does Hamas get its rockets? The number of rockets fired from the Gaza Strip into Israel has reached an unprecedented level these past few days. On Tuesday, Hamas said it launched 130 rockets in a matter of minutes in an attempt to overwhelm Israel's Iron Dome air defense system. The Iron Dome's interceptor missiles are far more agile and advanced but also more expensive than Hamas rockets. On Friday, the Israeli army reported that more than 1.800 rockets had been launched from the Palestinian coastal enclave. For many years, Hamas relied on Iran-supplied rockets. Fabian Hins, an expert on Middle Eastern missile technology told German public broadcaster ZDF that different Gaza-based groups have expanded their rocket arsenals. He said they possess thousands of missiles, as Israeli media outlets have confirmed. This week, the Jerusalem Post quoted Israeli intelligence sources that estimated the Hamas arsenal to contain 5,000 to 6,000 rockets. Palestinian Islamic Jihad militant group, which cooperates with Hamas, is believed to have stockpiled a further 8,000 rockets. Hint said Iranian rockets used to be smuggled into Gaza via Sudan and then Egypt. Ever since Sudanese dictator Omar al-Bashir's ouster in 20... In fact, the reason that the university within its borders was bombed by Israel was because it taught students how to build bombs. So, what is Hamas? Hamas, an acronym for Harakat al muqawama al-Islamiyah, or Islamic Resistance Movement, was founded in 1987 during the first Palestinian uprising against Israeli occupation of Gaza and the West Bank by a Palestinian activist connected to the Muslim Brotherhood. In 2006, Hamas won parliamentary elections, and in 2007 the group violently seized control of the Gaza Strip from the Palestinian Authority, which was controlled by the rival Fatah movement that governs the West Bank. There have been no elections since. The U.S. State Department designated Hamas a terrorist group in 1997. Several other nations also consider it a terrorist organization. So, what is Hamas ideology? The group calls for the or establishment of an Islamic Palestinian state that would replace the current state of Israel and believes in the use of violence to carry out the destruction of Israel. So, 
Why did Hamas attack Israel? Up to 1,000 Hamas fighters stormed across the Israeli border by land and sea beginning at daybreak Saturday in an attack that caught Israel's military off guard. Hamas leaders say they were pushed to attack because of an Israeli crackdown on militants in the West Bank, continued construction of settlements, which the international community considers to be illegal, thousands of prisoners being held in Israeli jails and Israel's ongoing blockade of Gaza. Mohammed Diaf, the leader of Hamas military wing, said Operation Al-Aqsa Storm was a response to activity at the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound in Jerusalem that is the third holiest site in Islam. The site, which is also located on the holiest site for Jews, who refer to it as the Temple Mount, has long been a flashpoint between Israelis and Palestinians. Israeli security services routinely raid the compound. Enough is enough, Diaf said in a recorded message. Today the people are regaining their revolution. Diaf leads the military wing while Yehya Sinwar, in Gaza, and Ismail Haniyeh, who lives in exile, are the senior leaders of Hamas. How big is Hamas army? Israel estimates the group has about 30,000 fighters and an arsenal of rockets and unmanned drones. How is Hamas funded? Hamas receives financial, material, and logistical support from Iran, though so far, international leaders, including in Israel, have said there is no evidence that Iran was directly involved in Hamas attack. However, it is apparent that Iran is a strong supporter of Hamas. According to the U.S. State Department, in addition to receiving funding and weapons from Iran, Hamas also raises funds in Persian Gulf countries. It receives donations from some Palestinians and from its own charity organizations. I hope this background on Hamas and the Palestinian movement helps you better understand what is happening in Gaza and in Israel. This situation has caused a powder keg in the Middle East and may eventually cause the United States to get involved in this war if it escalates. President Biden has issued orders to transfer two nuclear-powered aircraft carriers to the Gulf to deter Iran and Hezbollah from entering the war. However, our president speaks out of two sides of his mouth and our enemies may not believe that he will order the United States to get involved. If the United States gets involved, it could create a situation where we would be involved with potentially three wars at the same time, Ukraine, the Middle East, and then Taiwan. There is no way that our military could handle this complicated situation. It is hard to believe that in less than a three-year period, Biden has created a situation where our foreign policy is in shambles. Financially our country has over 30 trillion in debt and is increasing it over a trillion a year. If we don't have a change in leadership soon, America is going to be destroyed. Certainly, there is no evidence in the Bible that the United States exits in the end times. If this is true, we cease to exist sometime in the future. Certainly, the world situation is one of the most dangerous we have faced as a nation for a long time. Please continue to pray for our country as our leaders attempt to navigate this extremely dangerous environment. Visit us again watching for the next video in this series or another video on how we as Christians face cultural issues in today's society. You can see our other videos on our website, nehemiahreset.org or our Rumble account.